All right, let's take a look at that. So this will be a second lap hot lap because there is not enough speed when you get to the line turn one. So you can do this top turn here full throttle. And I think I did in this particular instance, but you don't have to. You can breathe out of the throttle for like an instant and help the car settle and you don't really lose any speed. I just did it just to show that you could do it. Uh, but the main thing is if you're going full throttle or if you're on the throttle, you do not want to see your car get sideways at all. You do not want to kick out the rears and, and get loose. You want to be super tight through this run up because the, the more tight that you are and the closer that you get to the wall, the less speed that you're losing from the uh, tire spinning. So we want to keep the car as engaged as possible. And you want to get in the throttles early as possible. So those two factors mixed together gets uh, for some pretty, it's pretty difficult, but uh, you'll get uh, the hang of it, I think. But those are your two goals. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring it down to the white line here. Get down here pretty early. Uh, you don't want to get down there too late or else you get through some bad bumps. And then coming back up to the wall, get up to the wall uh, as early as you can without like really sliding the tires or something like that because we're going to be doing a pretty big arc into this corner or comparatively speaking. So this is all full throttle, 100% full throttle lap. So the difference between one and two is that one and two we want to arc later and three and four, if this was three and four, we'd want to arc earlier. So because this is one and two, we want to arc a little bit later and this is because this corner is generally tighter. So once we get that really late arc, this will make our corner exit a lot easier because you're going to get a lot of a tight to lose condition if you get too shallow into this corner. We really want to time this apex with being just at or a little bit after the actual apex of the corner. So you see, I got down to the seam and this, sorry, this is where we're aiming. We want to be on this first seam the entire time or that's where we want to aim. And so the later we get down there, the easier our corner exit will be. So you can make corner exit while, while exiting shallow. But again, it's all about keeping your tires engaged. If you get loose coming off this corner because of some tight to loose condition, there goes like a 10th, I swear. So it's all about keeping your tires fully engaged and neutral handing, handling race car this entire time. And this is what it takes. It takes coming all the way up to the wall. If I were to, to make this corner any cut, cut it any more than I did, that would cause me to get loose. So it's really about walking that fine line of tight and loose and not sliding tires in any way. All right, so now we'll get to three and four. And once again, Three and four is a naturally loose corner compared to one and two, so we can actually get to the seam a little bit before. We will be aiming for the first seam again. So first seam, and you see we're gonna drive down really early comparatively, and it, you see my wheel, it's just going back and forth. That's the difference between loose and tight. Look at how in one and two, real quick we'll go back. Look how little wheel movement I have in one and two comparatively. Like I'm just making little movements and we're just kind of doing micro adjustments. It's not nothing really big. Getting through bumps, force feedback, all that. Three and four, we're loose. This is a loose corner. So that's why we can take advantage of this and get to the bottom early. But this is the harder corner because yes, we are getting loose, but we don't want to feel it in our tires. We want to drive this car with its tires engaged the whole time and kind of fight against the looseness. And that's why I'm, getting up to the wall so early, you would say, man, that's a bad line. You're just sliding up way too early to the wall. Well, that's what it takes to not slide the tires off the corner. It, I could enter or I could exit closer to where the traditional line is, but I would be sliding the tires in doing so and giving up a lot of time back because this car is so momentum based. So just keep that in mind that that is the one takeaway that you wanna get out of this uh, for the run up, for turn one and for turn two, you want your tires fully engaged the entire time. It's not enough to just be full throttle because full throttle can only get you so far if your tires are spinning along with it. All right, so we got that. So now let's go on to long run. All right, so I did a bit of a long run here and I was messing around 23 laps and I ended up with pretty bad right front wear, but along the way I figured out what I wanted to do. So that, that's really all that matters. So what I like for the first 10 or so laps, so we would like lap seven, I like just running the first seam just like we did in qualifying, but a little variations here. So let's go into cockpit. And what we will do is 
Um, turn this down a bit. So, turn one, I like taking wider than turn three. And the reasoning for this is turn three can really get your car loose naturally. And that's a good for getting the car on the right rear and forcing some tire wear on the rear instead of the front. Turn one, you can't really hook the bottom the same way. So I take this wider arc and just I'm a little more patient with it. And ideally I want to get all the way down to the seam, but this is good enough. So you see my throttle here. I go about half out as I'm starting to turn to the corner. I don't go full back in until I approach the seam and I kind of throttle into the seam. If you throw up too early, because that, that corner's a little tighter, you're just gonna slide up to the wall and either hit the wall or use a lot of right front to keep it off the wall. Okay, so three and four. Same idea, except I get to the bottom a little quicker because you see that rotation? You see how much I'm more I'm wheeling the car in this corner? This means that it's loose. And when you can get the car loose on purpose, then you can get a lot more wear on the right rear over the right front. So actually throughout the first 10 laps, my car was pretty much even tire wear. It was like 92, 91 through 10, at least from like when I first tried it out. And then I was messing around with a lot of lines and stuff uh, after that to see what would be the best uh, for a late run. And I concluded, and we'll go to my last full lap here. So this is lap 23. And I concluded that you can run either first seam or second seam, but you want to start using brake around lap 10, maybe a little bit later. But notice here, that I am using a bit of a brake tap just to, just to help stabilize the car in the corner. And honestly, I probably should use a little more here, but use that little brake tap just to get the car woed down so that you can rotate it without putting it all on the right front, just to help it drive neutral off the corner. And that really helps because you're not gonna be able to get on the right rear in one and two. Uh, so you just wanna keep it neutral as much as possible. And you can do that with the brake. Three and four, I use a bit more of the brake and I can actually throttle down the corner and get the car loose in three and four. So three and four will be a good corner until the it just stops working. It, it worked all the way to lap 23 for me. But what you do is you take, you have to go a bit wider the later in the run you go, but basically I break early and try to throttle down to the seam in three and four. And with this timing, you're able to get the car loose, and that's that's the key. That's what makes three and four a better corner than one and two for getting on the throttle early. One and two, you want to be a little more patient than three and four. Okay, so that's my that's my uh, that's my recommendation. I don't think the top is ever going to work. I think at the very best, you want, might want to defend at the end of the race on the second seam. Uh, let's see when I did this. Maybe right here. Yeah, so you can use this line to defend. I, I don't think anyone's gonna pass you up top no matter how late in the run you get. It's just too tight up there. You're slowing yourself down pretty much as much as anyone else. So it really isn't getting you anything. So this line is almost as good as the bottom line. I think that it'll wear more tire, but I think the nature of how these races go, you wanna use this as a defensive line towards the end of the race. Cause I don't think anyone can go higher and I don't think anybody can pass you lower. So just same idea of running the first seam, except now we're on the second seam. And we'll see if I did it here too. I Yeah, I think going to the bottom in three and four is like good. I don't think anybody's gonna run any higher any faster. So I would say a good defensive line is top of one and two, and by top I mean second seam, and then bottom seam of three and four. I don't think you need to go under that first seam, I don't think you need to go above that second seam. Let's see what we do here, yeah, so. Again, I'm, I'm experimenting with just running that first seam, using the brake. So th I think this will be the defensive line. I don't think it's the best line for your tires. I think it's the best line to ensure that nobody's getting past you. Because I don't think there's going to be much passing after the first 10 laps. All right. And so you can run this seam here too, but it just, I just like going that bottom better because it's the same exact time, but you're also getting the car more on the right rear. All right, that's all I got for this. Let me know if you got any questions in the comments. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I hope to see you all on the track.